Well, hey, good morning and welcome to Marty First Baptist Church. It's so good to see you this morning. Uh, we want to welcome you to, uh, to our service before we get back to school. We had a wonderful time at the school this morning just praying uh, the hallways. And, uh, and I saw a post on Facebook yesterday uh, that said, why is there so much negativity in church? It's like we've lost hope in Jesus. And so we're going to start off singing that song this morning. So if you would, would you stand as we sing about that living hope? How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Oh, who could imagine so great a mercy? Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken. I am forgiven, the King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living Oh, just the voice to sing, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free, hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh, I'll sing that again this morning, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free, hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. It came the morning. It came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. All this worship together this morning. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Oh, Jesus, yours is the Whoa! 
Brandon Haynes, would you open us up in prayer this morning, please? see this morning. Sing that together this morning. Worthy is the Lamb. King of kings, 
It's a blessing to us to be able to come together and visit together and love one another, pray for one another. This morning we began at 9 o'clock at the school for our uh, prayer walk. Uh, we had about 20, 25 folks there that went around the school and prayed around the school and prayed over the school and prayed throughout the school. And we're going to continue to do that. And this morning, I'd like all of our students to stand. If you're a college student, high school student, any student, anywhere, you stand this morning. All of our students, please stand. All right? All right, look at these guys. All right, all of our, all the teachers, faculty, staff, administrators, all you guys stand, okay? All the faculty, teachers, staff, everybody stand. It doesn't matter what school you go to. Any school's good. You're, you're, you're in a, on a mission field. And we love you guys. And we're praying for you. Let's do that right now. Everybody look around at these folks. Get somebody on their mind, on your mind, and begin to pray for that person. If you don't know, maybe somebody you don't recognize. But pray for them, okay? Let's do that right now. Lord Jesus, I love you. Lord, your word says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Lord, as we begin a new school year, as we begin uh, another year of boys and girls getting back to learning and students and college students going on and getting degrees in their lives and with the faculty and staff that are continuing to teach and educate our students, I pray first and foremost for your protection on them from COVID-19. I pray for protection all around this morning in this room. Lord, I pray as they go in the morning, as they gather at school for the very first time in 2021, I pray for them, Lord, you'd bless them in their new year. I pray that you'd keep them safe. I pray for all those precious folks that will be, uh, be used by you to teach and educate our students. I pray for the students, you'd give them a hunger to learn, to want to mar learn more and, and more diligently. Lord, so today... On behalf of them, Marmaduke First Baptist Church wants to pray for them. And on behalf of them, Lord Jesus, we lift them up to you. We're grateful for this honor and the privilege you've given us to pray for and to love on and to minister to. Lord, I pray that when the storms come, uh, Lord, we'll be on the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that when trials come, Lord, that we'll be able to have somebody to reach out to, to love uh, with, and to help us through these times. And Lord, so today we pray we're honored what a blessing it is today. Lord, we want to say, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord, the Lord God Almighty, who is, who was, and who is to come. Lord, we're thankful for all that you do. And we bless you. We pray for these precious students. We pray for the faculty, the staff, administrators. We pray for our community. Pray for the communities in Greene County and all around who will be going back to school. Bless our college students as many of them travel back and forth to school. Bless them in a special, special way. Father, this morning I pray for those families that have lost loved ones. Would you comfort them, bless them in a really special way. Lord, our hope this morning is that we're not to fear, but we're to trust. And so, Lord, help us to trust you in these uncertain times. Bless us as we worship you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Pray this will be your prayer this morning. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that God. 
stand as we sing that chorus this morning, church. Lord, I need you. Pray as Brother Kim comes this morning that he would just speak truth from your word. God, I pray that uh, that would be our anthem this week as, as the students go back to school and we start some sort of uh, normalcy, God, that, uh, God, you would just be with us through it all. And, God, that through it all, we would keep our eyes on you. So, God, I pray for this time. God, I pray for the students that go back at 8 o'clock in the morning. I pray for the students who have already went back. Uh, God, just keep us safe and watch over us. We love you in Jesus' name. Very much be seated this morning again i welcome you to first baptist church it's a joy to have you here this morning it's a joy to be in the house of god this morning uh, continue as i said to pray for our students in the morning at eight o'clock when they get to school you pray for them bless to ask the lord to be with them in a special way to parents and every all those families uh, mfec family how do people travel through life without brothers and sisters in christ once again the church has lifted us up and carried us to the throne of god requesting help on our behalf we're gratefully 
thankful for all that was done to help us through the loss of our mother and grandmother, Jean, Brenda, Tim, Janet, and Miss Jaden. And so we want to continue to pray for the Bennett family as we laid Miss Mary to rest this week. Uh, what a wonderful lady she's been in our life, a very great supporter of First Baptist Church, and we love her dearly, and we're so grateful this morning for you. Continue to pray for others that are battling uh, sickness, battling cancer, uh, battling, uh, uh, we got a little feller, uh, Nancy Storms, his grandson, is battling RSV, so pray for him this morning. A lot of families have, have fighting the COVID, uh, so keep praying for that. Be safe and be careful. Take your Bibles this morning. Turn to the book of Romans, chapter number 3, to the book of Romans, chapter number 3. It's where we're going to begin. My first scripture this morning is actually Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. And Romans chapter 8, verse 31 gives us a true understanding this morning of who's on your side, okay? The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 31, What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, let's say it together. Who can be against us? Let's say it again. If God be for us, who can be against it folks understand that god is on your side he loves you cares about you whatever you're going through god's on your side he loves you and wants you to know that and this morning as we share that paul has declared to us he has shown us through the uh, last part of we studied the word of god now that uh, which is a way to make a right a way to make us righteous before god not by the law not th- not keeping that standard of law that we can't keep because it's impossible to keep he said but not by the the law for no man can perfectly keep the law Romans 3 10 there is none righteous no not one so if you think I'm going to come in here and be a rule uh, abider that's good you're good you're that's a good thought but you can't do it you're going to mess up on the rules everybody say amen can't do the rules you're not a we're rule breakers we're good at that he says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God on our best day we're going to be short on our best day, we're not going to make it. We're not going to be good enough. We're just not going to make it. So instead, God sent his sinless son to take our place. We don't have to, 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 to follow these rules and regulations. And think, Now, there's things that we need to follow. I mean, we need to take, this is our guideline. This is what the word of God says. But folks, you can't keep all those rules and guidelines every day, all day long. You need Jesus to do that. He's your righteousness. Amen. He's your right. John chapter 3, the Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, you know that. You don't even have to look it up. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Folks, God loves you so much, he let Jesus take your place. Isn't that good? Amen? Now that ought to make a bunch of dead Baptists be fired up this morning, all right? Now listen, understand this, that God loves you. He cares about us. He sent his son in our place. Look, if you will, at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 on the board. Just look on the board. You look, it'll be up here. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. This is again God doing and providing. For he, that's God, hath made him, that's Jesus, to become sin for us. That's me and you. He said, who knew no sin. Jesus knew no sin. He said that we, that's us who are sinners, might be made the righteous of God in him God traded his son Jesus and all of his purity and all of his righteousness and all of his glory for everything that he is and he took us and he looked at us and he said they're a bunch of sinners and they need a savior so God provided the savior we are the sinners let's trust him this morning can I have an amen that's what he says and also look at first Peter chapter 1 verse 18 if you look there in first Peter write that down but here's on the board first Peter 1 18 says for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold and from your vain conversation received a tradition by your fathers it's not something that you can buy with money he said by verse 19 he says but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ as a lamb without spot and without blemish he said he said who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you who by him we believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory and your faith and your hope might be in God folks our faith our hope is in no one else other than Jesus Christ it better not be in First Baptist Church because we're gonna let you down I'm gonna let you down we're that's we're, we're humans and that's what we do 
Look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Before we understand where we're going this morning, I want you to understand what God has done. I want you to know that he's provided everything for you. He's given everything for you. He's done everything for you. The Bible says, for Christ, the Lord Jesus, hath once, once and for all, suffered for your sins, for my sins, the just for the unjust, the, good do, the, the do-gooders, and the not-so-do-gooders, all right? He says that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, he said, but quickened by the Spirit. That means to be made alive. God has made alive. He's done that for us. He's done for us. God took Jesus, allowed him to go to the cross, perfect, sinless, spotless Son of God, hang on the cross, the Lamb of God, and as the Lamb of God hung on the cross, he then became our substitute he took your place now when I was playing ball I never liked to go out of the game man I'd be so mad at coach Barner he'd take me out and somebody would come in but I'd get on the crowd and bench and we and, and folks that's what made our team better when you get somebody in there that's fresh they got good legs they're ready to go folks we need some fresh meat at First Baptist Church can I have an amen I need some folks to be get fired up and get excited about serving Jesus. And so understand what God has done for you, all the things that he's done for you, all his blessings he's done for you. Folks, we need just to return and give our lives to Jesus again. Say amen. Now, now go back to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, all right? In Romans chapter 3, beginning at verse number 27. Romans chapter 3, verse 27. So if you will... Uh, what God has done, he paid the price of our sins. Our sin. Thus, this upholds God's justice, his righteousness, and, but if you will, the punishing of sin as well as upholding his loving mercy. So anyone who places their faith and trust in Jesus and Jesus alone can now be redeemed, justified by the just one. We read that last week in verse 26, apart from God's, uh, and to become a part of God's forever family. I am so blessed when, when someone comes along and they adopt a child and they bring them into a forever family that didn't have a family that now loves them, cares for them, and they become their child. They become their own. They become one who, who loves them. And, and, and they're theirs. They're theirs and they're their responsibility. Folks, we want people who are lost and undone without Jesus to become a part of God's forever family. Amen? That's my, that's my hope. Verse 27. Here we go. Let's read. He says, where? Is boasting then? Is it excluded by what law or works? No, but by the law of faith. He says, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified, he says, by faith without the deeds of the law. Verse 30, 29 says, is he the God of the Jews only? Why, no. Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Verse 30, he says, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? He says, God through forbid yea we establish the law what's Paul saying here in these verses now if you will go back to verse 27 because that's the words I want to key in on today he talks about where is boasting how many anybody in here want to just brag on Jesus not many of us do that do we not many of us jump around and boast on Jesus and all the things that Jesus has done for us and he's done a lot for us hasn't he done a lot for us but the thing about it is, is what Paul's talking about is they're boasting in their, their own religion, their own works, their own things that they do. Look what I've done. Look what I've done. Look at me. And Paul, Paul here tries to get us to understand. He wants us to understand what can we possibly say. What has become our boasting, if you will. Salvation is just the, simply this. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Amen. It's not Jesus plus this or Jesus plus that or you coming to church or you giving a tithe or you tipping the Lord a little bit or you being a, a good person or you helping old people across the street or me mowing somebody's yard. That's not going to get us into heaven. It's not about doing that. It's about trusting Jesus and our hope is in Jesus and alone. Amen? And that's what Paul wants us to get about boasting. Uh, he wants us to know we're not to be proud. Look at Roman, uh, Proverbs chapter 6. In Proverbs chapter 6, uh, the Bible tells us in, in verse number 16. This is God's hate list. We read this a couple of weeks ago. We shared this with you in Proverbs chapter 6. He says, these six things doth God hate. Yea, seven are an abomination to him. 
Seven things. This made God's hate list. Remember this. Now, if you will go back from Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to Romans chapter 3, verse 20, tells us all about the things, all the sins that you and I have to fight, have to fight, and have to face it daily. It's a, it's a tough thing. And, and, and guys, I, it's been pretty hard. These old messages have not been real easy to preach. These old messages have not been easy to sit through. These old messages have not been easy. But, but I want you to understand, God has got a plan, and he wants us as his children to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ amen that's what he wants for you he don't want you being a baby Christian sucking on your thumb when you're 70 years old he doesn't want that he wants you to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and so Paul here said or, or the writer of Proverbs here says number one a proud look a lying tongue hands that shed innocent blood a heart that devised wicked imaginations he that sows discord among the brethren. He, he, he shares those things and he gives us those things to, to teach us some things. Guys, those are things that God despises. He hates those things. And those things are things that, that come natural to us. Because why? Because we're sinners. We, we, and we take the law, the law pointed all those things out and said, this is what you've done wrong. This is how you've done it. These are the things that you, you do. We have a desire, if you will, to, to follow. What part do I have in salvation? Just showing up, being a sinner. That's my part. I can't be good enough. I can't be baptized enough times. I can't, I can't give enough money. I, I have no thing, nothing, no thing to give the Lord except this sinful man. And he's traded his righteousness for my rags. He's traded his goodness and his mercy and his blessing. Now, if you look there in verse 27, go back there to verse 27. He says, where is your boasting? Is it included or excluded? He said, by the what law? Of works? No, but the law of faith. There's four laws, four laws in the book of Romans. These four laws are very explicit that Paul talks about. These four laws are something that we need to hone in on as Christians. Now, folks, this is not for those the lighthearted. These are some serious things. These are some issues that we have to deal with. These are some things that he has to, we have to realize. The laws, if you will, came into effect uh, not only of our physical birth when I was born physically, but also my spiritual birth when I was born again. Law number one, it's the law of sin and death. The law... Of sin and death when a man sins what's gonna happen he's gonna die for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is what eternal life you got to have eternal life the wages, the law of sin and death look if you will at Romans chapter number 7 look at Romans chapter number 7 in Romans chapter number 7 look at verse number 23 Romans chapter 7 verse 23 in Romans 7, 23, the Apostle Paul tells us, he says, But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. It's a battle. I don't know about you, but like inside my belly, inside my chest, inside heaves on side of me, World War III a lot of days. It's World War III. And it's a battle. It's a tough, tough, tough battle. He said, he said, bringing me into captivity into the law of sin, which is in my members, the law of sin, the law of death. Sin brings forth death. James says uh, about lust bringing forth, L, uh, lust, L-S, brings forth sin, sin brings forth death. It's the devil's LSD, lust, sin, and death. Satan brings forth those things. And we have to fight those. It's a battle. It's a daily grind. And here he talks about, and he says in verse 24, O wretched man that I am, he says, who will deliver me from this body of death? Who's going to help me? Who's going to help me? Who's going who's gonna to fix me? Who's going who's gonna to walk with me through this valley? The only one that I know of that can walk with me and may, help me make it all is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus. And he says in verse number 25, he said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but in the flesh I serve the law of sin. Up here, Lord, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to do everything I can do. How many of y'all said that before? Lord, I love you. I'm going to do everything I can do. I surrender all. How many times have we sung that? I surrender 
Anybody over here? Yeah. But you know what happens? After all the, uh, the, the smoke is cleared, <laughs> after all the dust is, has fallen, it's all gone if that old thing don't come back again, don't it? It's, just bad. it's a fight again. It's, it's another battle again. Then he says, look at chapter 8, verse 2. Look down just a few verses. In chapter 8, verse 2, he says, For the law of the Spirit, I like that, of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So he tells us there that that first law that we fight is the law that he says there, he says it's the law about my spirit, uh, physical birth. He says it's the law of death and the law of my mind. He said that's two laws that happened here and when I was born, first of all, physically. Then he says there in verse number, uh, go back to verse 27, he said the law of faith. Paul says in, Galatia, I mean in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. Say it with me. Faith. Say it again. Faith. Faith. You've got to have faith. Not faith in faith, but faith in who? In Jesus. That's right. You've got to have faith in Jesus. You've got to have faith in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You've got to have faith. And Paul says here, he tells us here, he said, well, no works by the law. He said, the law of the mind, the law of sin and death, but these laws to affect my spiritual birth, the law, if you will, of faith. When I put my faith and I put my trust in Jesus. Remember, guys, it's placing my all. Here is God, Jesus placed, here, he, here is Jesus Christ, and here is me and my sins, and God places those things, and Jesus, and Jesus takes care of them. I want to read you something out of experiencing God. Uh, from Dr. Henry Blackaby. He talks victory over sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Because of sin, Adam and Eve fell short of the perfection God intended for them. That was God's original plan, us live in perfection. That was what happened in the Garden of Eden. We were perfect. Adam and Eve were perfect. They didn't have any problems. Remember, they enjoyed one another. They loved one another, cared for one another. Every day they grabbed God by the hand. They visit with God and God. And they had such fellowship, but something happened. He says, because of sin, the Israelites relinquished the glory that they could have experienced as God's holy nation. Because of sin, Judas fell short of the opportunity to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Sin, listen, will corrupt every area of your life that it touches. Sin will cause my marriage to fall short of the promise that it had when I first got married. Sin will cause me to fall short as a parent, as a church member, as a pastor, as a worshiper, or as a friend. Every area of my life is susceptible to sin's destruction. Folks, when Satan plays, he plays for keeps. He plays for keeps. We find that the wonder of salvation is that God completely dealt with sin. Now think about this. He did what we could not do through Christ's ultimate sacrifice god by his grace offered his salvation and canceled the penalty of our sin by his grace he takes a life that has fallen short of god's best and gives it meaning he provides the opportunity to immediately confess our sins and be cleansed from all unrighteousness that's why he put first john 1 9 in the bible if we mess up josh we can say first john 1 9 what's first john 1 9 if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness folks isn't that good to know you've got a god that loves you that much man then he goes on to say he need he mends our broken hearts his grace he erases anger and bitterness he restores served relationships a uh, severed relationships he takes a life devastated by sin and makes it whole he takes our failures and produces something good only god can heal sin's devastation only he can bring or bridge the gap between you his glory and our sin you must trust him to do so if you would ask him he will free you from the bondage of your sin reestablish that relationship with him and restore you to holiness the law of the spirit in Christ Jesus the law of faith the law God wants us to follow day after day after day. The law that he plans for us. The law he wants for us to do. You see, that law of faith, become, we become made right with God. We become to made right with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Paul finally shared with us good news. There is salvation. There is hope. There's hope in Jesus. And this morning, as I, as I, as I thought about that all week long, 
because he has painted such a dark, ugly picture of sin and all of us falling and falling short of God's glory. Paul, if you will, showed us, if you will, the following law cannot spare us the looming judgment that will come and will come in our lives and come about us. You see, we have become redeemed apart from to, to be redeemed there's no other way to be redeemed but have the lord jesus christ as our lord and Savior. you can't be redeemed you can't be bought back unless you put your faith and your trust in jesus jesus came for sinners say amen are you a sinner yeah he came for you I don't care who you are this morning, doesn't matter where you've been, doesn't matter what's going on in your life right now. I want you to take a look in your Bible at Luke chapter 15. This is a wonderful story, and as I try to bridge the gap here between uh, what Paul had to say and what what God is doing here in our life, you see, uh, we were redeemed by the blood through his atoning sacrifice on the cross, the shed blood, uh, one drop of his blood. Jesus came for sinners, for all sinners. It doesn't matter. Some Some of us say, well, they're a worse sinner than me. No. Grounds level at the cross, we're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. We don't want to stack our sin up against anybody in here today, okay? Let's don't stack sin against anybody. Again, let's throw our rocks down. Let's put our rocks down because all of us are sinners. We all agree with that. Can I have an amen? Luke 15, verse 1. Look what the Bible says. In Luke 15, verse 1, the Bible said, Then draw near unto him all the publicans and sinners. Now, just think for just a minute. Let's stop right there. Who are the publicans and sinners? They're the tax collectors. Everybody hated a tax collector. They were despised. They, nobody liked them. They were terrible people. I mean, that's just because they stole from the regular folks. They took more than they were supposed to take. And they, people despised them. But he also says the publicans, the tax collectors, and the sinners. That means they're all the GP, the general public, the regular folks. I don't know about you, but as I look around the room today, you know what? I don't see any extraordinary people. I'm sorry, folks. We're all just regular people. Can I have an amen? Just regular folks. Now, now understand that. There's nobody that's above anybody else. The only reason I'm, I'm, a, I'm above you right now is because I'm standing up and y'all are sitting down. That's the only reason. But understand, there's nobody that's better than. There's nobody. Now, they may think they're better than, and that's, that's part of a, a, that pride thing we talked about earlier. But here the Bible says that the people that, that were attracted to Jesus were the publicans and the sinners. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting thought. You see, uh, they drew near to him because of Jesus' genuine care, because of Jesus' genuine compassion, because Jesus really looked at you and saw right through your facade. And it didn't matter to him. He just told you how it was. He loved you anyway. You know, that's what I look around the church today, and I just wonder, do you genuinely care about other human beings? Do you genuinely, is it something you're concerned about on where somebody will spend eternity? Maybe they don't dress like you. Maybe they don't look like you. Maybe they, 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 they're, they're, their bodies are different than yours. Maybe their lifestyle is different than yours. But do you genuinely care? Because the publicans and the sinners were the people that, that came to Jesus. As I said last Sunday, the church should be a hospital for broken people. For hurting people. For people who are the down and outers. For people who are the up and in. But Jesus wanted, but sinners and publicans came to Jesus. Now, then he says in verse number two, and the Pharisees and the scribes. Now, let's see that other category, the Pharisees and the scribes. They were the, the temple police. They were the people that wanted to, all your T's crossed, all your I's dotted. They want to make sure that you had everything like you were supposed to, that you were going to preach out of the right version of the Bible, that you were going to make sure that, that the life is like you ought to be, that you're living, you're walking the straight and narrow. When you're not, they're going to call you on the carpet. Kind of like going, y'all remember going to the principal's office when you was in school? I told them a while ago, I said, when I was walking around here, I said, the round building is the building that I was in when I was in school 40-something years ago. I said, the only reason I, I've been around there, the only reason I've been praying when I was in school around building because Mr. McIntosh was after me. Can I have an amen, all right? That's the only reason because he'd come down, he'd get me by my shoulder right here and he'd put me right to my knees. Now, folks, I'm telling you, he grabbed a hold of me one day and I thought, oh, my goodness, my wife had told on me something and he, got, he said, I don't want to hear that anymore out of you, boy. Yes, sir. I didn't do it no more. 
say amen? That's right. I was a good boy. I was a good boy. But this group came too. The Pharisees. The scribes. The one who knew the law. Frontwards and back. They didn't know the law of sin and death. They knew the law. But they didn't know the law of faith. They didn't live by faith. They didn't live by the way that God had had them to live. But they knew the law frontwards and backwards. They knew everything about it. Just like they knew the back of their hand. But then here's what Jesus said. They said this about Jesus. This man, talking about Jesus, receives sinners and he even eats with them. How dare he? Now, let's just think for just a minute. You see, we find folks have to, we come to that place in our life, we've got to become purposeful. We've got to become purposeful. I know COVID's kind of knocked us in the head for several things. Folks, I want you to know something. I'm not ready to give up shop and turn in the key and let somebody else have our building yet. Can I have an amen? I'm tired of having to bow down to the, to the things of the world. I'm tired of them telling me how I ought to live my life. Folks, but I want you to know something. With all that I have that's within me, I want God to guide this church in the days to come. Say amen. My prayer is that we as his children will fall on our face. Folks, I'm telling you, the only way we're going to see change is to get on our knees and pray. That's going to take some effort, not on my part, on your part, on all of our parts. Everybody, every child of God. It's your responsibility as well as my responsibility. It's our responsibility. Folks, if people are going to be drawn to Jesus, they're going to be drawn to Jesus because of your life and my life. The Bible says, by this shall all men know you are my disciples if you have love one for the other. Who do you love outside of the building, outside your own family? Do you care about anybody dying and going to hell? Good God, folks. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. That we've let so many come in the front door. And they go out this door right here. And they keep going out that other door. We've got to make a difference. We've got to make a difference we've got my friend we have got to be intentional about loving a lost and dying world people the the scribes and the pharisees the temple police said he eats with sinners they hang around him he goes to their houses when's the last time you've had anybody over that wasn't like you When's the last time you had anybody to your house that, that didn't do what you did? My goodness. We've got to be intentional. We've got to be intentional. And here's what the scripture says. But not, not only did, did, did they, they and looked at the parable, this, is the par this chapter is about the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. And the key word there is lost. Everybody say it. It's what? Lost. Lost. The man with the lost sheep, he left the 99. He went to pick up the one. The lost coin, the woman turned her house upside down because that was all that she had till she found it. The lost son was the son that went away and took his dad and took advantage of his father. There was two lost sons in that parable. The one who stayed home, the one who went away. Which one are you? But here in this beginning of this chapter, this is what they said. This man, this man, Jesus receives sinners and he even eats with them. The law of faith, it doesn't matter what your last name is. I don't care if you're a Bridges. It, it doesn't matter if you're a Myers, it doesn't matter if you're a Forbes, it doesn't matter if you're a McKay, it doesn't matter if you're a Bennett, it doesn't matter if you're a Richie, it doesn't matter if you're a Horton. God doesn't care. 
But he cares about you personally and doesn't care about our names. He cares about the person that's going to spend eternity away and separated from God. Come on, say amen. we got to be intentional. Because the, our community of 1,100 people is outside there waiting for somebody to let them know. Let me tell you a little bit about this. Scribes and the Pharisees. Who cares? Jesus. Who cares? Say it, Joey. Say it, everybody. Jesus. Say it again. Who cares? Jesus does. Now, folks, if we're a follower of Jesus, does that mean we ought to care too? We should. No matter where you live, no matter what you do. So Jesus cares. Second thing, he says, uh, where or whom does he receive? He receives all kinds of sinners. You start at Genesis, uh, Romans chapter 3, uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 18, and you start reading that, that list of sins that we've led from chapter 3, verse 20. You read every one of them. You read the list in, in, in Galatians chapter 6 or chapter 5 uh, before he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. He talks about all those sins there that we and I, is just kind of a daily thing. Whom does he care about? He receives sinners. He receives all kind of folks. Do you? Do I? Do we? Not only that, but how does he receive them? I like this. Just like they are. You let God do the cleaning. I can't clean anybody. I don't know, I don't, Foster, was it last year or year before last we caught all them fish and had, had Chuck come out and clean them for us? I didn't know how to clean them. I knew I'd mess up. Man, we had some big old catfish, and they were so nice. And I mean, they were really good. Old Chuck comes out there. It wasn't, didn't take him 30 minutes to clean about a dozen fish. He clipped them babies off. I'm standing there scratching my head thinking, wow. Folks, that's the same thing with God. You come in here, I want you to know something. Old Brother Kim can't clean you. All I can do is point you to Jesus, and he's the one that will clean you. Say amen. Just like that. Just like, but you have to have an expert, and Chuck's an expert at that. He knows how to do it. I'd mess that rascal up. I'd have all the meat over here on the skin. It'd be a terrible thing. I mean, we'd lose more meat than that. I can just hear my grandma Bonnie saying, Lucky there, that's a mess. That's a mess right there. Who does he receive? How does he receive them? Just like you are. Just like you are. When does he receive you? <laughs> today. The Bible said today is the day of salvation. And then he says... Why? Why would God receive all these sinners? Why would Jesus take all these sinners? Why would Jesus take all these folks? Because of his great and amazing love for humanity. You are loved, you are accepted, and you're a somebody. God loves you. He accepts you. And you're somebody he cares about. This morning, the law of faith ought to rule our life. Because I can't keep this law because the Bible says for all have sinned, I can't make it up to the top. I'm going to fall far short. I'm not going to make it. But I have the law of, of Christ Jesus that living inside of me, he loves me and cares for me this morning. Do you know Jesus? Do you care, church? Do you care? Do you care about people? Is that something that, that we need to talk some more about? I'm, I'm concerned. We seem to tuck tail and run. Folks, it's not time to run. It's time to pray. It's time to get a hold of God. It's time to get a hold of the altar of God and say, Lord, I'm not leaving until you do something. Because Jesus attracted publicans, tax collectors, and sinners they were considered the worst of the worst who could you zero in on for God so loved the world let's just let's make it a person let's make it personal for God so loved John or Alice let's start praying for John and Alice every day let's start praying and you you make an effort to see them because salvation Salvation comes when God, the Holy Spirit, begins to work in their life. But you know what? 
Everybody needs one chance to hear it one time, don't they? Get them in here so they can hear it. Tell them about it so they can hear it. Love on them so they can hear it. Be that example so they can hear it. Live the kind of life in front of them so they'll know it. Be that example. We need one another. I need you. I told a fella just this past week, I'll speak for Cole. This COVID's kicking my butt. I don't know what we're going to do. Our hospitals are full, folks. This is serious. We need to pray. We need to get a hold of God. Because some of these folks don't know Jesus is stepping out into eternity. We don't know Jesus and you're stepping out into eternity without Christ. That means separation. Not a little while. That's forever. That's a long time. I don't grow weary of the work. I grow weary in the work. Why did we grow weary? What happened when Moses had his arms up fighting the battle with the children of Israel? They won. When his arms fell down, what happened? They got whooped. Old Kim's arms about down to here. Cole's arms about down to here. I'm not crying. I'm not whining. I'm just being honest. We need you. We need you to step up. We need you to care about people. We need you to be concerned about people. We need you to pray for people. We need you. Every one of us. Every stinking one of us need Jesus more now than we've ever needed him before. We're not lollipopping through life. It ain't all bed, a bed of roses, and you know that. But give that child an opportunity. Give that parent an opportunity. When they come to me and say, Brother Kim, I don't know what I'm going to do. Brother Kim, I don't know how to raise my child. Brother Kim, I'm not clean. Brother Kim, I need to get clean. What are we going to do, folks? It's time the church be the church. We've had 18 months to play. Let's go be what God wants us to be. If we can't meet another month, another Sunday in the next month, we ought to be praying on our knees from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock every Sunday. You ought to be on the phone. Hey, how you doing? Texting somebody, I need you. How, how can I pray for you? What do you need from me? How, what can, if you need something to eat, can we fix you something to eat? I know a lady that would be more than happy to fix you something to eat. Miss Free to be doing that, all right? There's a lot of folks that need Jesus, and sometimes people just need to be God with, and be skin on. They need the Lord, but they need somebody to be who Christ is. Do I have to say anything? Just be there. Just be there. Last Sunday afternoon, Lynn and I left, went to lunch, and went to visit the Bennetts. Families were sitting around Miss Mary. Wouldn't be long, she'd be with Jesus. We sat around there probably an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. Lana was in the other room. I just got up, went to her bed, bent down, whispered in her ear, Miss Mary, I love you. Thank you for being a mom to me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for being encouragement to me. Thank you for always being supportive. I kissed her on the forehead. I prayed for her. We had gotten the car and left. It hadn't been ten minutes, five, ten minutes. Tammy had sent me a text, but again, she's gone. And I thought, doggone her, she's with Jesus now. Just think about it. I hadn't seen, ear hadn't heard what God had prepared for them. Folks, there's people out there that needs Jesus. And you may be the only Jesus they ever see. What kind of example are you? What 
kind of example am I? Would you bow your head and close your eyes? You see, who cares? Who did people come to? They came to Jesus. Who did he receive? All the guilty and all the helpless sinners. How? Just like we are. They came just like they were. When? Now. He wanted them to come now. He wasn't going to wait for dinner for five weeks. Why? Because of his great love. Father, I love you this morning. And I pray for your power in our lives. I pray for your Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm a very weak man and I ask for forgiveness of my sins. I pray for our church, for your church, for the body of Christ, for those men who through the years have been godly examples that you'd raise those men up. For those women who have been godly examples, you would raise those women up. If God, we would be caring and concerning about those around us. Lord, that, that we'd be mindful of the deeds that are around us in our community. Lord, that we'd be, be on fire for you. Lord, that we would make sure that prayer is a priority and it's just not an afterthought. It's the first thing we go to instead of the last thing we do. Lord, love old people today. I love these folks. Lord, if I never preach another sermon, I pray that they know I love them. I pray that they know that I care about them and that I want what's best for their lives and their families' lives. Only you know what's best. Help us to do one thing today and surrender. It's the hardest thing to do is surrender. I love you, folks. Jesus loves you more. Maybe you've got the sin of pride. Maybe you're too proud. Maybe you've got some sin that we've already mentioned. Some sin that's chapter 1, verse 18 through chapter 3, verse 20. Read it again. But the Bible tells us God's got a plan. He's got a fix sinners and that's Jesus Lord I pray today for your Holy Spirit how many of you know somebody right now you know somebody who needs Jesus raise your hand come on raise your hand let's pray for them right now let's pray for them God touch them right now that, that, that man that I'm praying for right now that I've been praying for for a long time I pray for him now we pray for them now how I many you know somebody's struggling right now? Know somebody's struggling, hurting in their life right now? Raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. They're struggling. Struggling. Raise your hand. Pray for them right now. Pray for them. God, you see our hands. But Lord, know our hearts. Know through, through grief, through heartache, through brokenness. God, we may be that Jesus that they need to hear and see. Help us to let them know we care about them. You cared, and lost people came, and people were saved. The New Testament church cared. What about the 21st century church? Folks, the altar is open. I, I'd encourage you to come. I'd encourage you to get on your face before God. Lord, I love you. Somebody here is lost this morning. I pray for them. If they don't know Jesus, they were to lay their head down tonight. They wouldn't be for sure they'd go to heaven. Lord, let me share with them Jesus this morning. I pray for leaders of men to be raised up. Leaders of women to be raised up. Leaders of students. Leaders of children to be raised up. I pray for burdens to grow heavy on our hearts. Until, God, we see victory. I love you. Thank you. So what you going to do? We're going to stand in just a moment. And all that in one motion. When you stand, you altars open. Come join me. Get as far away from somebody if you're concerned about that. You get away from it. Just pray. Or kneel there at your chair. But let's just pray and let's ask God to do a word. We're going to sing. It's your time. This is your time to think, what can I do? What can I do? Are you ready? Let's stand right now. Come on, right now. Come on, guys. Join me here. Before, by the 
sound of his voice and sees it all shaking and stirred can be calm and broken for my regard through it all through it all my eyes are on you through it all Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. How about it this is morning? Well. Are you ready? Are you ready to meet Jesus this afternoon? With like Miss Mary did last Sunday afternoon? Are you ready? It could happen. It could happen through everything that God's doing. He's got a plan for our lives. He's got a desire for us. He wants us to be men and women for of God. Men and women of integrity. Men and women who point other people. Even when my eyes can't even, even see. I can't even see. That's good. And this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown. Will be thrown into the midst of the sea. Not throwing any rocks at anybody. Through it all, through it all. My eyes are on him. Through it all. Through it all. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you, and it is well. It is well. So let go, my soul, and trust in Him. The ways and wind still know His name. So let go. and we still know his name the ways and we still know his name is it well with your soul this morning is it well it is well with my I just feel like 
God's got something for somebody, and I don't want you to miss it. When we're done, I'll be up here at the front. If you need to come see me privately, I'd be more than happy to visit with you. But I just feel like the Lord prompting somebody, some soul, trust him this morning. Somebody is not well with somebody this morning. Lord, I love you. Search our hearts. Know our thoughts. See if there's any wicked way in us, Lord. Lead us in the way everlasting. Help us, Lord, to be what you want us to be. We need you and we love you. We thank you. Thank you for your word this morning. May the law of faith rule in our life. May the law of faith, Lord, rule in every area of our life so that we can be an example. So that as the students go back to school tomorrow and someone asks them about their faith, they can tell them about their faith. When, a, when you, we go to work tomorrow, they can tell them about their faith. When we go to the grocery store tomorrow and, and we have a smile on our face and we have Jesus in our heart and a step in, uh, uh, just a, a bounce in our step, Lord, I just pray for it. opportunity. Help us to surrender. Lord, I know you're doing the work. Lord, I know you do it in your time. And I trust you today. I love you and I thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Oh, I love you. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being here this morning. What a joy. Cole, what are we doing this week, buddy? Yeah, so this week, like I said, be sure to pray for the students uh, tomorrow as they go back to school. Uh, it's an exciting time for that. And then on Wednesday, uh, we'll meet back and kind of do regular Wednesday night. So we'll have midweek morning manna at 11. And, uh, and then we will start, uh, we'll start serving food that night from 5 to 6. And then the youth and the children will both meet uh, here at 6.30, and 6.30 to 7.30. And, and Brother Kim and, and Miss Rachel, they'll have their adult classes as well. So come be a part of that as well. Um, but lots of good things going on this week. Uh, we start Teen College next Sunday. Uh, so be in prayer for that. We're excited about that, looking forward to that. But uh, be in prayer for that. And then uh, this past Wednesday night, we gave out school supplies, haircuts, um, and, and food. And so we had just a wonderful, a wonderful time in that. And, uh, and Rachel, how, how many haircuts did y'all give out? The 19 haircuts. Uh, they served countless snow cones up here. Uh, we served over 300 meals, and we gave away about 120 backpacks. And so uh, there's still quite a few back there. And so if you're a student or if you know someone who needs one, uh, they're kind of labeled as they go. And so uh, be sure to grab one on your way out today. Um, and what we don't take this morning, we're going to take to the school and make sure that it goes back into the school system. So uh, big weeks ahead. Just keep praying. Yes, please, if you know of somebody that needs one of those backpacks, take it. Take it, okay? Let them have it. Let them take it, and that's what we bought them for. That's what we got them. Filled them dudes up, prayed over them rascals, and did that. Uh, need you to pray for, I've got a good friend. Um, uh, Josh Guffey is his name. He works with uh, Mission Hope uh, in Haiti. And, of course, you know Haiti had an, a horrible uh, earthquake yesterday. They are in the path as well as the big rain that's coming from the, the tropical storm. So pray for Haiti. Uh, I would like to send some of our mission money there to help them. I'd like to send $1,000 there uh, to get started to see what's going on. Josh asked us for if we could help with that. Uh, so I, I wanted to let you know that's where I, what God has placed on my heart uh, to be able to start to be able to help those folks. Over three or 400 have died uh, and just a lot. So Mission Hope, we had, Cole and I had scheduled a trip there uh, at the end of 2019. Uh, and uh, we had to cancel that uh, into 20 was when we actually scheduled it. And we started in 19 learning about that. And we had had a trip planned, uh, a go-to trip to learn about Mission Hope. And, uh, but Josh, uh, it's John Hodges' son-in-law. And uh, so, so just know this First Baptist Salem, great, great opportunity to minister to folks and love on them in these very difficult times. A lot of folks to pray for. Uh, again, a lot of things going on in our church and a lot of things going on in people's lives. Remember that. Pray for them. Uh, if you need some help, let us know. We'll be our best to help you. Uh, just, uh, again, it's been a busy, busy time. It'll continue to be busy. I start revival tomorrow night at Providence Baptist Church in Kennett, Missouri. 
Uh, at, if any of you know where KBOA Studios is, it's just past KBOA Studios, and tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. So you pray for us this week as we preach, and uh, the men's and women's Bible study will meet this week. I'm looking forward to that, and uh, got a discipleship group. So when Josh has got a discipleship group he's working with. So a lot of good things going on. Pray for our students again, for faculty, staff. Mr. Richie, you got any words for wisdom for us tomorrow? For Pray for our kids this year. All right, very good. Well, let's stand, all right? Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. We love you very much. We sure appreciate you. Uh, let's ask God to be with us. Father, thank you today for the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, that you love us. Thank you that you teach us. Thank you for the law of faith that we have. And our faith is not just in faith alone, but our faith is in Jesus who redeemed us, who bought us back, who paid for our sins, who traded his righteousness for our rags. Thank you so much. And Lord, if there's somebody here that doesn't know you, I pray for them. I pray for every home that's represented here. Thank you for the good number you've sent our way today. I pray that you'd keep us safe in these very uncertain times. Bless our students, faculty, staff our schools bless those going back to college bless those who are going away and away and, and learning father i just pray your will be done thank you for all that you do in jesus name we pray and all god's people said Amen. hey don't forget the offerings plate on the side at the back thank you everybody god bless you have a great day